All right, welcome to the podcast. On today's show, we're talking to Maria, founder of Fungiments. For people who don't know, what does your company do? We say that we bring we bring the fun in life through superpowers, and the superpowers are the ones that we're seeing here. Fun in, in the Fungiments way is kind of like all the feelings that you crave on a daily life basis, energy, good sleeps, strong immunity, and confidence because you have a great skin. Oh, and great digestion. I feel like when you have great digestion, you feel great. Okay, and let's go to the beginning of this. So you have a, quite the journey here <laughs> in terms of just how you got one to America, but also how you got to starting a CPG company. And so let's go to when you were small. So what, what was at what point did you realize maybe you had the entrepreneurship bug or like what did you see about yourself that you're like, I, you know, I'm a little bit different? Yeah, I think it was a lot to do with my family. My dad is a serial entrepreneur. Like he uh, has had so many businesses and like he's the kind of guy that wakes up at night and no joke, he actually does this. He's He's asleep and all of a sudden he wakes up, he grabs the calculator because he sleeps with a calculator by his night table, does like something in, like in his calculator, he looks at it and he's like, and goes back to sleep. So that's kind of like my dad and that's what I saw growing up. And then my mom, she was always like pushing me to do like my own venture. So like in school, Victoria's Secret was not available in Colombia. I'm from Colombia. And I was coming to the States for like a family vacation and I would bring like Victoria's Secret underwear to sell in school. Oh, that's funny. Wow. <laughs> and it was so, uh, my mom was... Uh, <laughs> that's <laughs> really <know>. smart, actually. <laughs> and I yeah. was overcharging everyone to of like... Of course. 6X. Like <laughs> this is like the Apple iPhones in Peru. It's like the same thing. Like if you had a smartphone, you could sell that thing for like four times that's what you so bought funny. it for. That's so funny. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I was probably like 12. Right. No, uh, <laughs> totally. Also, like my mom is a holistic doctor. And she, I was kind of like the weird kid growing up, like taking like green waters and like seaweed uh, snacks and stuff like that. That was not available. And mind you, like this is Colombia and like the trends were not even a trend in Colombia. So my mom was making this like healthy snacks and I was selling them as well in school. Okay. Um, So I guess that. So you had a little bit of you then. Yeah. Yeah. And then at some point you get into acting, modeling. And then when you move to America... I'll give you my story. So when I moved to America, I thought, oh, my God, I can do anything here. Like, it felt like there was something, like, unlocked in terms of just from a cultural perspective or just, like, there's so much of a hustler, grind mentality. Kind of weird. But it's also you're not you're in a country where there aren't political roadblocks or terrorism, let's say. And so it makes it a little easier or it feels easier, I guess. What did you feel when you moved here? I feel like I connect to that, that what you're saying. But when I was traveling here, when I was a kid and I was coming to visit with my family, it's like, ah, oh, this is this like a land of opportunities. I don't know how I feel like yeah. that. But like the fact that they have Victoria's Secret for me was like, <laughs> it's hilarious. But the fact that I could like make business out of bringing things from the States to Colombia and there was such interest about that. Um, I don't know. I felt like that sparked something in me. And then when I fully moved here... Of course, back then, it was more out of the interest of grow my acting career. Mm-hmm. I've been acting in Latin America since I was eight years old. And I was looking for bigger opportunities. I didn't want to keep doing telenovelas. I love them, but, you know, I, I didn't want to go on that route anymore. I wanted to pursue bigger and better, and I knew it was going to be more difficult, but I kind of had that in me. I remember the last project that I finished in Colombia... I was telling the director, I was like, no, I'm going to move to the States. And he's like, really? Wow. Why? You have your career here. Like, why Why would you? Yeah. And I told him, there's something in me that needs a challenge. And I don't know why. I don't know how to explain it. But I can't find that here. And that's one of the reasons why I'm moving. And when I came here, that's that's what I've been feeling. Really, a big challenge. <laughs> it's been... And you landed Griselda, which yeah. is on Netflix. Great show for yeah. those who haven't watched it. The Sofia Vergara. I think she directed... Did she direct it also? She produced. Produced it. Yeah. Okay. So how did you get that? And what was so special about maybe that experience? Everything. It was my best... My first Hollywood production. What were the differences between the oh, Hollywood production and the telenovela world? Everything. Mind <laughs> you, like the last one that I had just done was 
in Colombia and we were shooting like in the remote remoteness in Colombia. So <laughs> we were sitting down in like little Remax chairs. I don't know if Remax, like those little plastic chairs, yeah, like yeah, in yeah. the middle of the jungle, like in the middle of everything. It was like, not that That's the production, funny. it was a really big telenovela, but it's Colombia. And like, of course there's not unions and things like that. We didn't have a trailer, like it was a whole thing. Oh, and wow. I was exhausted. My food, every, I was exhausted. Do, and people then, get good, do you make good money doing that? Yeah, you do. But then, of course, there's like a, a money conversion, like from dollar to peso. Mm -hmm. And the pesos right now, I think it's four pesos is one dollar. So even when you move it to here, it's like not really. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I got you. So, yeah. So when I first moved here and I do Griselda, you kind of have like your own assistant, like someone walking with you for everything you do. I was like, eh. and she was like, are you cold? I'm like, yeah. And she goes, runs and brings me a blanket. I'm like, oh, you, really? you, you really don't have to do that. <laughs> wow. Um, so you really receive like, and you have your own trailer and you have your own uh, stuff, which wow. I mean, of course, like there's productions like that in Mexico and Colombia, but they're fewer than here. And of course, coming to here and then, you know, the production value is like, the whole camera setting and the directors and how many takes you get to do. That's a big difference because I was doing probably 29 scenes a day. And here we were doing four or five scenes a day. That means that you really get to dive in into what you want out of that scene. Interesting. And yeah. It's a bigger budget, more time. Yeah. Yeah. Did you learn anything from Sophia? Just very in the moment and very grounded. She's a, that, that's something that I, I caught from her and I don't know, she has like this elegance and beauty in her that is, it goes beyond her like physical beauty. Yeah. So you start entrepreneurship. If, if Victoria's Secret is listening, they should probably hire you to do something because that would <laughs> know, be hilarious. Funny. It would just be full yeah. circle. Yeah. And then acting. And then how do you land on wanting to launch this company? Of all the things, of all the things you could do, what is it about moving into the mushroom world that you liked? Well, it came as an answer to a question that I had okay. been meditating on. So you and meditate? You meditate often? I meditate every day. My mom How is 10-15 minutes. Okay. Every morning or something? Yeah, every morning. My mom instituted that in my life since I was six years old. Because she's like this holistic That's Ayurveda amazing. person. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, the, I'm telling you, I grew up like being like the weird kid in a lot of ways. Like I was doing theater. I was doing like eating weird things and meditating like <laughs> what <laughs> but i've been meditating i've been asking i wanted to do something around mental health and i didn't know what it was i had a, a business in colombia it was a beauty supplement company i loved working on that i ended up exiting um, and selling the company to our distributors but i wanted to do something with mental health because i felt that when i was working on beauty it, there was a void. There was something that I'm not, I didn't feel that I was fully helping people and I was not fully like sharing something meaningful. It was also like a part of judging myself. I don't know why I was going through the stage. And anyway, one night, my boyfriend and I, my now fiance uh, and I were saying good night. Actually, we fell asleep and the light switch was on his side. And I go across it to turn off the lights and he's he's facing down and he wakes up and he does this and I'm behind him and he uh, hits my nose with his head, breaks my nose oh and gives me a God. concussion. I mean, actually the breaking my nose part was probably the, the scariest of part. Of course. I didn't notice like the head things that were going on. I was, I just stood up, run to the bathroom. I saw my nose and it was like crooked and I'm like, okay, I have a big issue here. Oh my God. Uh, so that was very scary. But then that was the beginning of a really intense journey. I went through the six month concussion. I lost my memory, I lost my vision. I had overwhelming anxiety. The anxiety to the point that I couldn't even cross the streets. Like I couldn't be in restaurants. Like it was so, such an intense uh, concussion that one day uh, I'm sitting down in this restaurant uh, and it's, this is probably like three days after uh, the impact. And I'm sitting down in this restaurant and I'm telling Cole, my boyfriend, I'm like, I don't feel well. Like, this is not okay. And he's like, right, you, you, don't, you don't look okay. Should we go? And I'm like, no, no, it's okay. And I started breathing and doing like <laughs> breathing techniques in the middle of the restaurant. And I, all of a sudden I passed out and I wake up on the emergency room. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. And then they diagnosed me with a concussion. And as I grew up with this like natural ways of taking care of myself, 
and I didn't have my doctors here. I had just moved to the States probably like six months ago. And I was trying to find every solution and meeting like every neurologist or anyone that anyone would recommend me. I was trying to find answers. And of course, the more traditional route to heal the anxiety or to calm my anxiety and to give me energy, because those were the, the two most important things, was traditional medications like Adderall or Xanax. I didn't want to go on that route. I just refused to go on that route. I didn't want to become dependent on something. So I kept searching and I kept treating my body in the most natural ways possible, trying to do detox and things to help my inflammation and then doing lots of meditations and walks and try to intuitively heal my body because I didn't have my doctor until one day I found this video of an athlete because I'm like, wait, athletes, he, the, like they get like impacts in their heads all the time. All the time, yeah. And they're on the next day on the court, like they're like fine. So why me that I got this little silly impact in my head? Why am I going through these crazy changes? What are they doing? And I found this guy talking about mushroom supplements and mushroom adaptogens uh, and mushroom therapy. And weeks later, I met this doctor, an Ayurveda doctor, and I said, what do you know about mushroom supplements and do you think they can help me? And he's like, well, we can try something for energy and we can try something for sleep and anxiety using mushroom supplements and other adaptogens. So I tried that. And I'm like, okay, this is what I'm looking for. This is what I'm is, is allowing me to start feeling better. And it was a long process, you know, like healing a, a brain injury. Yeah, how long did that take? Six months. And Jesus. I still have a lot sure. of pain on this side of my body, but... Did anyone explain it to you? Is there like a, it's a, a weird an case. answer that you got <laughs> that made you feel a little better? I wish. No. Yeah. <laughs> no, I haven't found that. I did found a lot of relief through like different therapies I go... To, I went to a chiropractor that is more like holistic and he treated me with like ultrasound waves and kind of like infl inflammation things using heat and lasers and stuff that flushed out a lot of this contraction so like my brain can start like decongesting and that was a big answer in my time so anyway to answer you that was a long yeah. story no but that i mean that's powerful that's yeah. a life-changing event in a lot of ways and at some point you probably thought i'm never going to act again or who knows what's happening with your memory or even the, obviously you're in the camera and so the look i mean there's so many things that you could be thinking everything uh, lights a lot of anxiety uh, yeah everything yeah noise all the stuff yeah yeah that's wild okay yeah and then after feeling that relief i told my boyfriend I want to do something with this. And as I said, like I've been asking for a mental health project. I thought it was going to be a nonprofit, but it really came as a really clear answer that this was it. Because I was like, people need natural alternatives. Yeah. Be not everyone has to go through a concussion to feel that they need natural alternatives to get more energy or to heal their anxiety or to really take care of themselves on a daily basis. I feel like nowadays we're tired of kind of like the, or we're looking for other solutions. Of course, like the people that need it and that need the medications definitely should and go for it because there's like different, you know, diagnosis. But in general, I feel like there's this curiosity to find natural ways of taking care of ourselves. So I told him, we want to do something with this. I want to do something with this and I want it to be fun because I felt like my life was not fun in that period of, course, of time. Yeah. Life has been like taken out of me and all these medications felt boring and all the supplements that I was finding felt boring. Uh, I went through different pharmacies and supermarkets trying to find something similar and I didn't. The dosage was not right. The sourcing was not right. And that was the clear answer. I was like, I want to do something with this. So I sat down and started creating the branding. I wanted to be fun and speak to a younger generation. I wanted to feel that it was wellness for everyone, that wellness and fun could be in the same sentence. So that's kind of like how Fungiments started. And it's started. literally in the word, Fungiments, fun. Yeah, yeah. Fungiments. <laughs> First of all, super powerful story. And yeah. you know, I think an entrepreneurship, it's always like you're, all, you're really solving your own problem. And it's yeah. usually a deeply rooted thing. What was your first step? Like what, what, and maybe the conversation you had or the videos you were watching, what was the first thing you took? Like the first supplement that you maybe started to feel, was it like lion's mane? Like what was the thing where you were starting to feel something? 
All of them, really. So, of course, they tackle different needs. So, reishi and ashwagandha and lemon balm were very strong for anxiety. And one of the things that I really fell in love with that I didn't find out there was that a lot of the brands were using just mushrooms. And it really takes a long time for you to feel a mushroom. And back then, I didn't have the patience. Mm -hmm. I didn't have the patience to just, like, sit and wait and, like, let's see what happens. Uh, Yeah, that's honest. yeah. Yeah. I wanted to feel it right away. And the combination of mushrooms and adaptogens at the same time really brings you that, really. And that's something that I'm very picky about when we're working with our formulator, with our doctor. I really want to feel the effect right away. I really want to feel satisfied that I'm taking this supplement, not feel that my money is being robbed because I took this and I'm just like hoping that what they're saying is true. (laughs) That's a horrible feeling. People do that all the time. They do that all the time and it's so annoying. And it's it's really not legal. It's not okay. They shouldn't be doing that. You're giving someone hope, like in a way. Like for me, that was hope. Like I was, when I was seeing this on the pharmacies and they were saying like it relieves anxiety and I was going through crazy anxiety. I'm like, oh my God, yes. And I go and invest $29 on this product and go to my house, try it. And don't feel any relief. And that's such a disappointment. You feel robbed. <laughs> yeah. So what was your first step? What was the first product um, you created? Or, or your partner even? Like how did you sort of get down the road where you're releasing a product to the public? It came really quick. And kudos to Cole, which is my partner in life, in love, and business. But he's very, he's so determined and he pushes the ball forward. I'm, I tend to be more patient and and wait, patient and wait to elaborate things. But he was, no, we can go into the market right now and sell it right now because his family has a lot of expertise in the retail industry. Uh, They've been in the retail industry for 40 years. So kind of was like, we're just waiting for you. Yeah, and yeah he, that knew, kind of, he knew the game. Yeah. yeah. But with the right brand, with the right product. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I started right away and probably... After we finalized the first round of tests, which was probably like eight months later, after we started, the products were good to go and we were feeling the efficacy and we had proofs that it was good and we have scientific tests and whatever, we started pitching. And it's been a really interesting journey because we honestly have to uh, learn to say no because we've been getting a lot of yeses, which is a blessing in disguise. You now have to learn who is a strategic partner and who is not, because not everyone is. That's exactly right. And so when you guys launched the company, how, when did you launch the company? Uh, two years ago. And how many products did you launch with? Two. Bouncy and Chill. Super Bouncy and Super Chill. And give people a window into what those are. Super Bouncy is a product for energy, focus and concentration. Back then, it was what picked me up out of bed because I didn't have the energy to get out of bed. And what do you have in this one? What's in um, it? This one is Cordyceps, which is a beautiful mushroom to enhance like stamina and energy. It has ginseng, which helps with cognitive functions. And it has green tea extract, which gives that pick me up energy without the jitters. Yeah. Without the anxiety that I'm a gonna, lot of like I'm going to do that later give. today before I play tennis. Yeah. I'll take yeah, that. do it. You'll feel like. <laughs> I'll let you know how I feel. You'll get bouncy in a way that you don't feel jittery, yeah. which a lot of energy products I feel lack. Either they tell you they give you like brain boost and you don't feel anything at all. Sure. Uh, and you're just like, oh. I guess. <laughs> yeah. Or you actually feel too energized and jittery and like you don't feel in control of your body. Mm-hmm. This one is a really good blend. Uh, now I take it every time, every morning. Every morning. Okay. It's like on top of my computer. So like I grab it when I'm like sitting down on my desk and start working. Yeah. And I take it. And what was the other product you, you came to market with? Super Chill, uh, which is for sleep and relaxation. This one is Reishi, Ashwagandha, Lemon Balm. And it is just a beautiful blend to give you that soothness that you need before bed without the grogginess on the next day. And so that one's more of a nighttime thing generally? Yeah. Okay. And then did you guys get any capital or did you fundraise or how did you go about that? Uh, Right now, everything is private equity, uh, private uh, funded. Sure, sure. Because there's so many things that we're learning right now. The brand is still like, even though we're in Walmart and vitamin shop, I feel that we're not there yet to become like a VC funded brand. Like I want to learn so many things about how people react on our marketing strategies before we start going out and finding capital. Yeah. How are you doing that now? So what's the marketing strategy? Obviously you have your own following 
what has that been like in sort of launching the brand? Is it all digital or what, what is the strategy? Uh, we're doing different things. So it depends if we're in, in stores. So for example, we just launched on Fresh Time, which is a grocery store, like natural grocer in the Midwest, which is amazing. It's a great partner. We just launched, so we started doing demos to give people like a, a taste of what Fungiments is. And then we start working with influencers to go shop in the store and give them a, a purchase card for them to like shop around fr- Fresh Time and shop for Fungiments and create content, content. around it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you have a third product. So when did you release the third one? Actually, our third one was uh, Super Prune, which is our bestseller right now. Okay. Super Prune is, it, it came out of creativity, really. One day I was calls my, my boyfriend's mom's house and I saw she had a bag of prunes. And I thought about my bag and I'm like, I have a bag of prunes and you're laughing. So uh, yeah, you know you something know, about you prunes. You know it. You know it. This uh, is like my grandma. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's something Growing about up. that yes yeah there's like a, a grandma nostalgia about 100%. prunes and stuff oh, and that's so funny yeah and she i had this black of prunes and i'm like <laughs> wait what is a better better way to carry these ugly back of prunes than to carry these ugly back of prunes this is not sexy yeah. and i'm sure like all the girlies out there that are on a trip with like someone they're just started to date they don't want to take out that ugly bag of fruits like that's not gonna happen that's so funny yeah and i was like what is a better way to take a prune without having to be an ugly bag of prunes yeah yeah, i was like oh gummy is a very similar experience and i went to our formulator our doctor and i was like hey prunes and different herbs with mushrooms is that possible for uh, a better bowel movement it's like sure uh, we can start working on that. And now we have turkey tail, which is the hero mushroom, yeah. and it acts as a very strong probiotic. And then we have different herbs like chamomile, ginger, cinnamon, uh, which are all great for gut health, and a prune juice, and then super prune. So that was our third, and now is our, our bestseller. Everyone is loving it. What is the price point of each of these products? Around 20 21 25 Okay. Yeah. And is the play for you guys, like when you think about your company a year from now, two years from now, is the play to be in mostly in stores or is it D2C? Um, or, or Amazon, where do you see it growing the most? We, we see it. Amazon for sure is a, a big player for this early stage. I feel like Amazon is great for kind of like working your own advertisement as well. Like even though you don't, you don't own the customer, mm-hmm. it's a great way to get in people to see you, especially for supplements. It's the biggest place where people purchase supplements. So Amazon for sure. Uh, and in between D2C and retail, I think it's like an 80-20. Where do you want to be? Whole Foods, Air One. Air One could clearly hold this. What's the yeah. what's on the horizon? I think finding really strategic partners on retail, not everyone, because we did do that for a really long time. We were like, yes, 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 because everyone was telling us yes. And we felt so lucky that everyone was telling us yes, that we were like, sure, let's do it. But then we realized that if we even get a yes from a store and it's not a strategic partnership, uh, we shouldn't do it because that's going to not perform well for them. Is We're not going to look good. That's right. Um, the velocities won't be there. Yeah. yeah. Yes, growing on a very strategic partnerships on retail and then growing our own D2C, I think like 80-20 being like the, the spread percentage. Of, that's smart. Yeah. Any desire to go on Shark Tank? Uh, that's funny. Why do you ask? We actually have <laughs> talked about that. Yeah. Yeah. The, well, I mean, we've interviewed probably 30 or 40, maybe more, maybe like 50 Shark Tank companies. And it's an interesting thing because to your point in marketing, it's, it's like really the best marketing play I think there is. It's because it doesn't cost you anything other than time. Mm-hmm. And then if you go... Your best case scenario is you get a deal. You know, your worst case scenario is you got some airtime, generally speaking. Yeah. And so that's why I ask, you know, I think to, like if I were starting a company, I would probably do it. How interesting. Yeah, we've been talking about it. Uh, have the brands that been on Shark Tank said that has been good for them? Like all of them. All yeah. Of them. Yeah. They've all said it's been amazing whether they got the deal or not. The numbers I can give you are basically they do almost like, half the year's revenue uh, when that show airs. 
and so it's a huge spike in just sales wow if it airs that's pretty big okay tomorrow i'm starting yeah, yeah. <laughs> so no, apply, <laughs> apply and then even in the ones that there's a deal on tv and that doesn't work out you know there's still relationships there um, yeah i think at a minimum what i've learned is all the brands learn how to think about their business differently and so you walk in there thinking you know a lot of things but then these sharks these experts bring you questions that you know, you may you have not know. thought about right. or thought about in the way that they're thinking about them. And so right. there's a part of it that just makes you sharper. Mm. That's worst case. Yeah. And then there was one guy, Nashi is the name of his company. He was making like this like ketchup, but it looked like a little, almost like a little toothpaste bottle that you could just write like for kids. So you could write like uh-uh. with ketchup and mustard, but it's, it's edible. Uh-huh. And his whole problem was when he got into stores before going on Shark Tank, you know, you're looking at it as a parent, the parents ultimately buying it, and they don't know what it is. They're like, if my kid starts using this, like, chisquete, like this little thing to start drawing on their pancake, are they going to think everything in the house, <laughs> right? Like the glue and the right. antibiotics is now. Mm, mm. And so anyway, and so for him, he had this real marketing problem. So yeah. by him going on Shark Tank, he was able for the first time with a huge microphone to really illustrate to the world what his product actually is mm. and how kid friendly it is. And then right. that sort of transformed. His yeah. And so he went on just for nothing more than to educate the consumer yeah. in a quick way. Right. Yeah, for sure. And you get also that kind of like speed dating with advisors, like in a way that that's right. It's so precious. Like yeah. I, when I get with a really good advisor, when I get on a call, Oh my God, like your brand becomes like better, like in the whole hour, like, yeah, yeah. So I'm sure like that would have that same impact. All right. What else can you tell people? Where do you want to take this business? How big do you want to go? Well, we want to become the supplement brand for younger generations. Uh, We want to bring the fun feelings for everyone every day. Life is more fun when you have superpowers is our slogan. And it's true. Like when you wake up and you have energy, you feel energized. And I don't know, we take it like even if you were going out. We take, yeah, we take super bouncy and it feels like, yeah, it feels good. Uh, So yeah, become like the supplement brand for younger generations and keep bringing the fun feelings. I love it. And then for you personally, so here you are wrapped Griselda. What's next on your horizon in the acting world? I just finished a movie with Al Pacino, uh, Dan Stevens. Congrats. Um, It's coming out this year, later this year. And that for me has been definitely something very exciting. So I'm looking forward to that yeah, last huge. year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Good yeah, for you. I know. <laughs> and last year I did a movie with Alec Baldwin and Isai Morales and Terrence Howard that's coming out soon, like in a month or two. Terrence like, Howard, he's like a genius. He is a genius. Terrence, I love him. Like he, you can sit down and he will sit you down. You, like he, if you meet him, like he will sit you down to give you a physics class, a math class, and a UFO yeah, who class. Knew? <laughs> I was watching the Joe Rogan episode. It was three hours long, and I literally watched the whole thing. And he, I didn't know he was a chemical engineering student, and I was just like, this guy is incredible. He is. Like his acumen is incredible. It's almost sad that he's an actor in the way of like I say that in the in the way where people won't they can't see him as anything else. Right. That's. Yeah the sadness where it's like right. he could be a genius but no one will see him because you're so used to accustomed to seeing him as like an oscar winner right or whatever an actor yeah all right so you got some exciting movies coming out also yeah that's awesome yeah yeah and the company we'll get we'll look tell everyone where they can find you and obviously the brand and, and purchase the product fungiments is really the handle everywhere uh instagram and tiktok and fungiments.com on uh, you know the website and me maria.giraldo that'll be it All right. Thanks for coming on the pod. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed this episode, share with your friends, your family, or anyone you might think might benefit from the conversation we've had today. And if you haven't already, please take a moment to leave a review on your favorite podcast platform. We'd greatly appreciate it. Your feedback helps us improve and reach more people who can benefit from our discussions. The best way to stay connected with us and get the latest updates on future episodes is through our social media channels. You can find us at Startup Storefront. We'll be back next Tuesday with another great episode. See you then.